Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. All right, isang masaya at makabuluhang afternoon sa ating lahat. So you are currently tuning in to our online tutorial session for Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So good afternoon po sa ating mga parents, din po na nanonood, mga kapwa ko po guro, and especially sa ating mga grade 11 and grade 12 senior high school teacher, uh, senior high school learners na nanonood ng ating first itulay session for quarter four. So we are now on week number one. Ang target natin learners for this session is the evolving concept of life based on emerging pieces of evidence. Yeah, so hintayin lang natin ma-share ang ating PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, thank you po. So once again, we are about to discuss the evolving concept of life based on emerging pieces of evidence. So ano kaya yung mga evidence na yan? Uh, we'll all find out later on. So my name again is, at mga bagong viewers, at sa mga suki natin, so my name is uh, Sir Tony or Shooter Tony for, for Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So samahan niyo ako sa susunod na 40 minutes ng pagkatuto tungkol sa ating Earth, sa ating nag-iisang planetang Earth. For this specific session, we'll be using the module provided by uh, Region 4A Calabarzon or the Pivot module. Uh, specifically, module number 21, entitled Evolving Concept of Life Based on Emerging Pieces of Evidence. So, dyan lang ang ikot ang ating learning competency for this week. <clears throat> Ayan, so are you guys ready? So, laging mong sinasabi, ating mga requirements for this particular session, uh, it would help kung meron kayo dyan pen and paper para makapag-note down. You also have the copy of your uh, SLEM or your learning modules. Okay din yan. Of course, I need the presence of your mind and presence of your heart as we relate our lessons sa ating mga pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. <clears throat> and most importantly, of course, para maging mas interactive ang ating session, I am requesting everyone to please uh, comment down kung meron kayong mga questions or meron kayong pa-shoutout dyan sa mga classmates ninyo na namimiss nyo na, sa mga teachers ninyo and your parents yeah, you may comment down your your pabate or anything na gusto niyo sabihin. May question kayo mamaya sa ating discussion or better yet, answer sa ating mga activity. So comment nyo lang sa ating comment section. Don't forget to include the name of your school at saka kung saan kayong province or school division office. Alright? 
Ayan. So before we formally begin, so I want everybody to to uh to to know this. No, this coming May 22, 2021, that is on Saturday, we are going to celebrate the International Day for Biological Diversity, diba? So yearly actually uh sina celebrate naman natin yan. But this year is very uh, important because ang hashtag na ano eh, hashtag for nature and ang advocacy is we're part of the solution. Okay, so our solutions are found nasa kalikasan natin. And of course, ang kalikasan will not be complete without us humans. And this campaign advocate, <clears throat> advocates nature-based solutions to our uh, conditions or mga issues na kinakaharap natin like climate change, mga health issues, food and water security, di ba? So meron tayo mga scarcity ng water, sa food, and also mga sustainable livelihood. So paano nga ba nakikinabang yung tao, tayong mga tao sa kalikasan? And of course, paano tayo makakapag-contribute sa uh, patuloy na pagprotekta at pag-conserve ng isang sustainable na planet Earth? If you want to know more about the International Day for Biological Diversity, you can visit the link na nasa baba, www.cbd.org int slash biodiversity dash day para ma, ma explore nyo pa kung ano ba yung uh, mga projects or mga programs na international day for biological diversity so we will, are going to celebrate uh diversity unity and diversity kumbaga right ayan for our session objectives ayan ang pinaka objective lang natin na isa so we have to explain the evolving concept of life based on emerging pieces of evidence. So hinatian ko lang, or nilagyan ko lang siya ng mga specific objectives. First one, we have to identify the sequence of events of the history of life on Earth. So may idea na kayo dyan, kasi no, last quarter, uh, pinag-aralan natin yung geologic time scale. The second one is, we have to name the pieces of evidence. I'm sure you can still remember about fossils and rocks. So mention natin yan ulit because they are part of the evidence on the evolution ng buhay sa ating planeta. And then finally, we have to recognize the importance of knowing the history of life on Earth. So bakit nga ba mahalaga pang pag-aralan yan as a senior high school student or uh, Filipino learner? Bakit kailangan nating inaaral yung history ng buhay sa ating planeta. So we'll find out more. Ang target natin, ma-discuss natin yan lahat in the next 40 minutes. Alright. So before that, so since we are beginning a new quarter, so nung last quarter, di ba, ang focus natin is geology and other branches kasi earth science. So for this quarter, ang focus naman natin ay life science or biology or ang uh, ibang uh, others call it biological science. Ayan. So ano nga ba, sir? Ano nga ba yung inaaral natin? Or what is life science or biology? So life science is a collection of disciplines that is made up of theories and principles. So we will be encountering different theories and different principles as we go on with our discussion in the next eight weeks that will discuss or tackle the structure and function of living things. So ang pinaka-focus natin this time is living things and how we contribute or how we affect the environment. So starting from the molecular level up to the entire ecosystem. So ganun ka-broad, ganun specific at ganun din ka-broad yung coverage natin ng biology or ng life science. Actually, you have encountered different life science courses in your junior, junior high school, if you can remember. Ayan, so, sige nga, can you still remember the different uh, branches of biology? Ayan, okay, based sa mga icons na yan, who can uh, uh, tell me the different branches of biology? So, ang in-highlight ko lang dito, yung three main branches. The first one is uh, the study of animals. So, we call that zoology, okay? That is zoo zoology. The next one is, of course, kung may plant, kung may animals, may plants. So the study of plants is called uh, it's called botany. Okay. Then finally, we also have uh, the study of microorganisms, including bacteria and viruses. Ayan. So speaking of virus, diba? So we are still in the COVID-19 pandemic. Mix. So pa, uh, meron tayong sabi nga nila, may kalaban tayo na hindi nakikita, the viruses. So we still have to observe organisms, including viruses. We have what we call microbiology. So we have zoology, botany, and microbiology as the three main branches of biology. But actually, there are other subdisciplines pa. Yeah, so tingnan natin sa next slide. Ayan, so life science or biological science, 
as you can see, uh, as depicted in our presentation, this field advances our knowledge about different fields like anatomy. So when we say anatomy, we study the, the structure or the parts of uh, uh, a human body or the parts of other living organisms. We also have cell biology. Pinag-aaralan pinag ang uh, biology or paano nagka-function ng isa between living things and the environment. Of course, kasama din sa ating uh, Earth and Life Science course ang pag-aaralan genetics. So when we say genetics, uh, pinag-aaralan naman natin dito is heredity and variation. So ano ba yung mga traits na the transfer from the parents sa kanilang mga offspring or sa kanilang mga magiging anak in the future. We also have a field called molecular biology. Ayan, so uh, ang focus naman nito ay yung mga macro, biological macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And then finally, one of the most uh, known uh, branch of biological science is what we call physiology. So when we say physiology naman class, uh, we study the functions of a specific part. So related just sa anatomy. So lagi mag best friend yan, si anatomy at saka si physiology. Kasi anatomy sa parts, si physiology, ano yung ginagawa ang niyang, uh, anong particular function ang pinaprovide or ginagawa ng isang particular body part or organ. Ayan, so all living things on earth. And speaking of uh, advances in technology, so we are now currently in the COVID-19 pandemic, of course. Isa sa mga highlight ng advances ng uh, tao bukod sa mga biological researches natin, of course, is how to combat the COVID-19 virus. And one of which is, of course, the COVID-19 vaccination program. So all around the world, nakapag-provide na tayo ng mga uh, nakapag-invent na ng mga different vaccines. Ayan. So hopefully sa Philippines, uh, we'll get the yung tinatawag natin na herd immunity para at least lahat tayo ay ano na uh, immune na or hindi kung hindi man immune ay kung bigla may we have the protection already against the the virus okay and singit ko lang tong commercial <clears throat> may pa may pa commercial <laughs> ayan so the department of education recently launched the the program called back to school ligtas na bakuna para sa balik eskwela so encouraging the teachers like me so mga teachers and the non teaching personnel na magpabakuna na so sabi diyan sa kanilang advocacy protektahan ang ating pamilya paaralan at pamayanan alamin ang tamang impormasyon magpabakuna na so you can visit slash back to school or you can coordinate coordinate with your local government unit para at least ma-vaccinize or ma-vaccinate, we get vaccinated, right? So that's the back to school program. Ayan, so we are now ready to discuss the evolving concept of life based on emerging pieces of evidence. So later on, <clears throat> wala, makakakita kayo ng mga different artworks like this one. So I found this on the internet, so I, I have the link yan sa presentation ko. So mahilig kasi ako sa art. So ayan, so I have... Uh, as you can see, so from the simple, so from a single point, nag-evolve yung mga different, form, uh, different life forms. We have animals, we have insects, we have the plants, of course, we have the humans. Ayan, may astronaut pa nga tayo dyan, and uh, conquering space. Okay, so paano nga ba nag-evolve? Paano nga ba nag-start ang buhay sa planetang Earth? So saan ba nagsimula yun? Sa galing ba yan sa outer space? Pinala ba yan ng mga alien? Or... Naging conducive ba yung place ng o yung earth para mag-emerge or mag-bloom ang life? Alright? Ayan, saying good afternoon to our <clears throat> viewers. Sige, uh, konting shout-out lang tayo. So, ang una kong uh, nag-comment, si Miss Gertie Palyota Restauro. Good afternoon po. Also to March Device. Good afternoon. Watching from... Ayan, so RRNHS. Tess na solitalino watching from Sarangani. Ayan, so good afternoon po sa inyo. Lagi kong may, laging may nanonood sa akin sa, from Sarangani province. Elsa Mendoza from Marinduque. Hello po ma'am. From Bullies, Bullies Nin Elementary School. Ayan, so Jen Cabanas Morada. Good afternoon from YouTube. We have Joel Kudyama. So good afternoon sir. Watching from Flora National High School, Apayao Division. So parang last week or mga previous weeks natin, meron din tayong viewers from Apayao province. So good afternoon po sa inyo lahat. Let's continue our discussion. So of course, uh, our discussion will not be complete without the, the discussion of this one. 
So ano ba yung uh, mga indicators para malaman na ang isang particular entity ay may buhay? So these are the different characteristics of life that we have. First, ayan, so i-assess natin ang sarili natin. Ha? <laughs> First, there are we living things. Buhay ba ba tayo? <laughs> First, they respond to their environment. Of course, uh, we respond to the stimuli. Let's say for example, di ba ngayon sobrang init. Most, ayun karina sa news na panood ko, pulang-pula ang uh, Pilipinas, mapa ng Pilipinas. So ganun kainit, ganun katinte ang init na nararamdaman natin. At nara kapag nararamdaman mo ang init na yan, very good. <laughs> Kasi living thing ka. So pasok ka sa first indicator, they respond to their environment. Next, you grow and develop. Of course, uh, after uh, through time, diba? So we grow and develop. Next, you're capable of reproduction. So we we came from the we came from uh, from the cells of our father and our mother, diba? And all the other living things as well. So they have their parents. Mapa isang parent man yan kapag a sexual reproduction or dalawa kapag sexual reproduction. The next one is. Ayan. So, we living things exhibit metabolism. So, ano ba yung metabolism ang tinatawag natin? So, when we say metabolism, sa mga nagdadayat, di ba? Ang bilis naman ng metabolism mo, nakakaingit ka naman, parang gano'n. When we say metabolism, this refers to how fast our body cells or our body uses the energy that we derive from the food that we eat. Okay? So, isa, isa humans yun na. Or in just in the other case ng mga living things, sa source ng energy nila. So, for living things like us, humans, uh, pag sinabi natin mabilis ang metabolism, mabilis na nagagamit ng, ano, ng katawan natin yung uh, energy na we derive from, from the food that we eat. So that is metabolism. Kumbaga, it's a total uh, of the body processes na nangyayari sa katawan natin. Next is, ayan, we have the homeostasis. When we say homeostasis, in a uh, commonly on uh, a common term we can maintain the balance di ba so tayo mga tao ang normal temperature natin is 37 to 37.5 so kapag bumaba yan or tumaas yan so uh, may may something wrong sa ating katawan but normally we can maintain or our body can maintain its uh, balance or its homeostasis and then finally, we are made up of cells. So, ilang cells ba meron sa katawan natin? We, have made, we are made up of trillions of cells. Okay, mostly, ang mga higher forms of living things like humans, like plants, and uh, the animals, of course, we are made up of thousands, millions, or even trillions of cells. So, depending sa living organisms. So, speaking of cells, uh, we have to review... There's two important terms. So types of organisms based on the number of cells. Ayan. So we have what we call prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. So kasi magagamit natin to sa discussion natin mamaya, especially dun sa timeline. So ano nga ba, Sir Tony or Tutor Tony, in difference? Can you still remember the difference between a prokaryote and eukaryotes? So technically or generally, prokaryotes, ito yung mga single cell organisms. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, are the higher forms of organisms, including us. Okay, so we have the unicellular, the single-celled organisms for prokaryotes, and then for multicellular organisms. Ibig sabihin ng multicellular, we are we are made up of, of co of course, more than one cell, <laughs> two or more or hundreds nga sabi ko kanina, hundreds, thousands, millions or trillions of cells. We are referred to as a eukaryotes. Comparing their structures, so parehas silang may cell membrane as a protection, they also have ribosomes. Ayan. So para saan ba ribosomes? If you recall, ang ribosomes ang tagagawaan ng protein. Ayan. So hindi mabubuhay ang isang cell kapag walang protein or hindi nag-undergo ng protein synthesis. And as you can see din, ayan, kailangan kasi ng genetic material. So ang role nun is for reproduction. Uh, for prokaryotes, ang genetic material nila ay matatagpuan sa medyo ito, medyo magulo nga lang, no, na parang loops, ayan, it's called the nucleoid, compared sa eukaryotes na define or definite ang uh, location ng nu uh, nuclear material. So we have the nucleus, okay, and as you can see as well, for eukaryotes, ang ating mga cells ay made up of different cell organelles, or the little organs na may specific functions. Unlike sa prokaryotes, yes, they have functions, pero hindi siya ganun ka-organized. So, is, ibig sabihin lang, mas simpler ang mga prokaryotes and then compared sa mga eukaryotes that we are more complex. Ayan, sa biology, we use the term uh, we are more complex compared sa prokaryotes. But, 
uh, we will rem uh, we will uh, learn later on the prokaryotes sa kanila talaga nag-start so we because of the process of the evol evolution that's why eukaryotes emerge all right so again that is prokaryotes and eukaryotes ayan so ang mahiwagang tanong natin for this afternoon is have you been curious of when kailan and where saan nag-start did where did life possibly start on earth so kailan ba yon Ang age kasi ng Earth is around 4.6 diba, billion years old na siya. So, kailan nag-start yung life? So, to give you an idea, diba, naaralan natin yan sa GTS or the Geologic Time Scale, may mga specific na periods, may mga specific na area kung ano yung mga events, important geological events, kung kailan ba nag-rise yung mga plants, mga first animals, kailan nag-emerge or nag-evolve yung mga humans. Ayan. So, we will know more about this one later on. And as you can see, diba, ayan, sa left part, but nang iba ba? So, life begins, actually, begun on water. Kaya kasi nasabi nila, if there's water, there could be life. Diba? Kaya nga, scientists, especially the scientists sa uh, NASA, they are actually uh, looking for water sa mga other exoplanets natin. Alright? Let's continue. So, have you been curious? I've already asked that. So, during the 1800s, Geologists and the naturalists found several forms of physical evidence that confirmed that the Earth is very old. And because of that age, of course, uh, they also trace mga geologists kung ano yung mga life forms na nag -exist. Okay? So what are the dif uh, different evidence or the several evidences that support the flourishing or the booming of life on planet Earth? So our discussion will, fa uh, will mainly focus on three. Okay, the first one is, ayan, kanina ko pa namimension, lagi natin namimension, uh, namimension during the third quarter. So fossils, ayan, so fossils once again are the remains of the living organisms that used to thrive or live on our planet. So first is fossils of ancient sea life on dry land far from oceans. So sabi ko nga dati, di ba, bakit merong mga natagpo ang fossils ng mga marine creatures or organisms Sa dry land, sa mga mountains. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? So, if you would recall, the fossils serve as a clue kung anong nangyari or what happened or are situation ng Earth during the, the during millions of years, way back millions of years. So, this supported the idea that the Earth changed over time and some dry land today was once covered by oceans. Especially yung mga places na may malaking portion nun ay sedimentary rock. Kasi kapag sedimentary rock ang nasa area, Malamang sa malamang, 100%, 99% to 100%, yan ay covered with water in the past thousands or millions of years. So fossil evidences like, or evidence like this one, the trilobites, I hope you can still remember yung mga early uh, invertebrates natin, mga kamag-anak ng crabs, mga shrimps, lobsters, ayan, they have the external exercise. We have the exoskeleton na protection nila, the trilobites, ayan. And of course, ayan, merong natagpuan na fish fossil. So we assume that this is a fish because of its structure. Ito ay natagpuan sa Himalaya. So Himalaya is a mountain range. So anong ginagawa ng fossil ng isda sa Himalaya's mountain range? So actually, the Himalayas was once covered. So this suggests that that place is covered with water before. Okay? So that's our first evidence, fossils. Next, oh yeah, who would forget our discussion of stratification, di ba? The different uh, layers of rock. So this uh, gives the geologists the idea kung ano bang nangyari at ano yung mga living organisms that flourish during a particular time of, of the geologic time scale. So this allowed the people, the layers of rock, uh, they allow the people to realize that rock layers represent the order in which rocks and fossils appear. So the rocks kasi, yung kapartner yan with the fossils, using the relative dating and absolute dating. Ayan. So the geologists were able to determine kung ano yung mga specific organisms, living organisms that uh, thrive, at saka anong klaseng environment din ang nangyari during a particular era or period on Earth. Ayan, so remember that numbers. Ayan, di ba? May mga layers tayo. Ayan, so relative dating yan. So we have two na, fossils and the layers of rocks. And then finally, ano kaya yung pangatlong evidence? 
Ayan. So we have here the indications that volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and erosion. So yan, fresh na fresh pa yan sa ating past discussion last week. Ayan, so that happened long ago, shaped much of the Earth's surface and supported the idea of an older Earth. So ano bang kinalaman ng ano yan, ng mga natural uh, forces of nature like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions? So they also give the geologists a clue para matahe. Di ba? Ma, ma, dis, ma determine kung ano yung mga specific uh, uh, events ang nangyari for the, for the, for the, so they can, uh, dito? so they can trace, di ba, the existence of different living things sa ating geologic time scale. So that layer has, so we have fossils, the layers of rocks, and the uh, different, uh, geological processes like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and erosions. Ayan. So let's proceed with our first activity now. So this one is found on module 21, page 5. So timeline of events. Dun sa module, so you are asked to read. And then after reading the information, you have to arrange the pictures mamaya sa next slide. And then number them 1 to 6 para ma-order yung appearance of life on Earth. Okay, so para mas madali nyo maintindihan, so I will be providing on the right side yung mga pictures para at least ma-visualize ninyo. Okay, so we'll begin with 4.6 to 3.8 billion years ago. The early Earth is said to be violent. Ayan, di ba? So hindi pa siya stable because of the meteorites and volcanic eruptions. With this condition, may tinatawag tayo na zircon crystal. Okay, zircon crystal was formed out of the magma and the lava, of course. The next one is, next important evidence, uh, 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 event, ayan, wala ko, event. <laughs> 3.5 billion years ago, life on Earth initially began with prokaryotes. Ayan, we discussed prokaryotes, the simplest of the organisms, sila yung una na nag-boom or nag-exist nag sa ating planeta. They are discovered in sedimentary rock formations called the stromatolites. So pinakilala ko na mga stromatolites during our discussion sa Earth Science. So, ano ba yung importance ng stromatolites? Connected yan sa ating pangatlong event. 3.0 billion years ago or 3 billion years ago, the first photosynthetic organism thrived the Earth, which is the blue-green algae called the cyanobacteria. So bakit very critical? So very, bakit very important yun? So, of course, no na start na mag-produce ang mga cyanobacteria ng oxygen, naging stable na ating atmosphere. So naging stable na rin yung mga water cycle and all the other cycles and everything else follows. I eh, followed. Everything else followed. So yung condition unti-unti nang nagiging maganda para mag-exist ang buhay. Okay? So imagine that. So it took millions of years para mangyari yun. Okay? But see them uh, Kung makikita naman natin yung present, di ba? It was, kumbaga, ni landscape nga ni God, very beautifully and very intelligent. Next is, ayan, 2.0 billion years ago, the first, or the appearance of the first eukaryotes. Ayan, so from prokaryotes, nag-evolve from a simpler organism, naging mas complex na. So, ayan. So, the multicellular eukaryotic cells or euka eukaryotic cells or eukaryotes. Next, ating uh, timeline. The Paleozoic era, when the trilobites, ayan, the trilobites and the cephalopods, when we say cephalopods, ito yung mga ancestors ng mga mollusk, mga tahong, ganyan. Uh, ano ba ba? Uh, we have the squid and all the other shelled uh, invertebrates. Okay, mga snails, ayan. So they tribe, ayan. So nag-start, di ba, ang buhay sa, sa oceans, ayan. The Paleozoic era when the trilobites and the cephalopods became dominant, specifically during the Cambrian and the Ordovician periods. Next, one of our highlights, 251 to 65.5 million years ago, the Mesozoic era naman, ayan, so the age of the reptiles, mga dinosaurs. On dinosaurs, konti trivia lang, when we say dinosaurs, it came from the Greek word dinos, which means terrible. Ayan, so literally, uh, pag din, uh, dinescribe natin yung word na dinosaur, it means terrible lizard. Terrible. <laughs> they are the giant uh, uh, reptiles that roam around the earth ayan, during that particular period. But of course, be because of a specific or a particular 
uh, event, so they were they were wiped out. But still, some of them survived and others evolved. So, naging, some of them, some of their reptiles become became birds. So, iba naging mammals. And then eventually, nag-evolved na nga ang buhay. And then finally, on our timeline, 250 thousand years ago, the Cenozoic era or the recent life and based on the paleo paleo paleontological evidence, ayan, Homo erectus have evolved. Ayan, so Homo erectus or the upright man, so diba, so natutunan gumamit ng tools, maglakad, magroam, and then eventually mag-evolve yan into uh, nin the Neanderthal man, the Neanderthals, and then nag-evolve into the present day humans, the Homo sapiens. And so based on that discussion, let's answer this. And so analyze lang natin mga pictures. Medyo ito lang nakita natin sa 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 module no, medyo grayscale nga lang siya, pero understandable naman siya. Ayan, so what should come first at base sa ating discussion kanina? Of course, the zircon crystal will serve as our first event. And ti unti nang nagiging maganda ang condition ng Earth during that time, ayan, because of the, ayan, the cyanobacteria found on the stromatolites number two. Followed by, what, which, will, which will be the next, of course, the prokaryotes evolved into, some of them, eukaryotic organisms. The fourth one is, ayan, the cephalopods and the trilobites roam or dominated the oceans. And then, dalawa na lang. So, syempre, mauna dyan ang time of the dinosaurs. And then, finally, nag-emerge tayong mga humans. Okay, so, learners, you can take a screenshot of this para mag-guide kayo sa pag-answer ng inyong learning module sa Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So, don't forget to ano, comment, maka may question kayo, or you might want to answer our activities as well. So, I encourage you to answer Ayan, so the next activity is called Arrange Me. So this one is found on page 9. So medyo mahaba-haba ito na pagbabasa. Ayan, so your task is to arrange that from 1 to 8, 1 being the earliest. So ano kaya yung una dyan? Okay. So since uh, Mac, uh, limited lang ang time natin, so tutulungan na kayo ng Sir Tony. Eh. Okay, so pero din discuss pa naman natin siya isa-isa. So again, this one is found on page 9. The, the activity is called Arrange Me. So ang first doon sa activity na yon, first event is 1. The presence of organic compounds on early earth. So when we say organic compounds, ito na yung mga carbohydrates, the proteins. Ayan. So there's specific uh, chemical process na nangyari para mag-exist ang buhay. The earliest forms of life, the prokaryotes niya. Number 2 is the emergence of the first cell organisms lacking nucleus okay the third photosynthesis and aerobic respiration involved in some bacterial lineages the fourth one and the membrane system and nucleus evolved through the modification of cell membranes as you can see now from the steps two three and four and the other steps later on nagkakaroon na evolution on a cellular level from the simple organisms magi emerge into complex Organisms. So number five, aerobic bacteria. They live inside some of the eukaryotic cells. Then descendants of this bacteria evolve into mitochondria. The mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, it gives the energy of the cell. Number six, oxygen producing photosynthetic bacterial cell entered a eukaryotic cell. So another type of bac uh, bacteria. So this one, ito naman yung mga na evolve na magiging plants in the future. So bacterial descendants evolve into chloroplast. Yung mga chloroplast naman, they contain the green pigments called the chlorophyll, which is very important in the process of photosynthesis para makagawa ng sariling food ang mga plants. And then, ayan, seven, nag-evolve na, nag-emerge na yung mga mas complex, mas higher forms of living organisms like fungi, animals, and algae. And then finally, Ayan, so modern life na, including the mammals, the birds, and all the reptiles that have survived. Ayan, so ito yung uh, eg, uh, exact arrangements. So you can take a screenshot of that, or pwede nyo balikan ng ating uh, a session later on, may uh, replay naman tayo. So let's proceed with the next activity. So sana may sumagot sa comment section. <laughs> Ayan, time to reveal, arrange the jumbled word to reveal the evidence. So madali lang to. 
So I have mentioned the, this uh, words already. So para may clue pa, may picture pa kayo from Tutor Tony. First is a marine animal first evolved at the beginning of the Cambrian period, 542 million years ago, where they dominated the ocean. So ano to mga creatures na to? Starts with a T. So we have what we call the trilobites. Ayan, yung kakalimutan, lagi niya namin mention. Next, the modern human that have evolved 250,000 years ago. So modern human, homo, ayan, itsura niyan. Okay, so we have the homo erectus or the upright man. Next, let's proceed. A basic cell type which lacks true nucleus. Bacteria, blue-green algae, and other organisms are examples of Organisms belong to this cell type. Of course, we have ayan, the prokaryotic cells or the prokaryotes. Yeah, so good, good afternoon sa ating mga bagong viewers. I hope makahabol kayo or you can watch the replay para ma-connect ma nyo yung mga first part ng ating session. Next one is, these are the giant reptiles, the terrible lizards that roamed the earth during the Mesozoic era. Of course, these are the dinosaurs. And then finally, these are the basic cell type. Uh, this basic cell type possesses a true nucleus that contains the DNA. So my specific location, your genetic material. Of course, that is your eukaryotic cells or the eukaryote. So that ends our time to reveal page 10 activity. Ayan, so as a summary, uh, key points to remember lang. So as you can see in my diagram, so we have here what we call the tree of life. So from simple organisms, nag-branch out siya, parang puno, di ba? Nag-start sa maliit na structure and then eventually nag-grow yung mga branches. So the branches represent the different living organisms, of course, including us humans. So if you want to have a clear picture of this, you may get the link. Ayan, nakapost naman yung link sa ating presentation. So pasadahan natin ang mga key points ng ating session for this afternoon. The universe is about 4.5 to 4.6 billion years old, and life on Earth probably began between 3.5 to 4.0 billion years ago. Evidence from fossil records show the emergence of the different life forms. So very important ang ating mga fossils as well as the rock layers. The common ancestor of all life forms was prokaryotic. So yung basic cell type. And at present, the stromatolites, ayan, kitang-kita pa yan pala, no? So the stromatolites are found in the Bahamas and Australia. So they are the, the house, mga pinakabahay ng mga cyanobacteria during that time. Next, eukaryotic cells evolved from prokaryotic cells. Then the evolution of life is brought about the changes in the environment. So very important na uh, key term pala to class, no? So that the environment will dictate kung paano uh, mag-evolve ng isang specific lang living organism. So sir, bakit ba nag-evolve or bakit kailangan mag-evolve ng isang specific organism? Kailangan niyang gawin to or mangyari to sa genetic material niya para mag-survive. Maga, di ba? Survival of the fittest. So kailangan mag-survive ng kanyang uh, race or ng kanyang species. So that's why environment plays a very key role para uh, mag-evolve or paano mag-evolve ng isang living organisms. Including then, of course, sa environment, kasama dyan yung uh, factor ng climate at saka ng geology. And then finally, uh, this Earth's environmental changes made the Earth's environment more suitable for a wider variety of life forms. As you can see, ba sa discussion natin, naging hanggang naging mas stable yung planet Earth, mas nag-flourish ang planeta. Mas naging diversified yung buhay or yung mga different life forms. Alright. Let's try to answer this assessment questions. First one, oxygen was scarce during the early development of Earth. By this situation, what organism or what kind of organism first existed? So wala pang oxygen. Aerobic ba? Anaerobic? May mamal na ba nun? Siyempre, wala pa. And protes, yung mga higher forms of organisms na to. So you choose between aerobic and anaerobic. So the answer would be, of course, kapag walang oxygen, all right. So letter B, anaerobic organisms. So some of them live without the presence of oxygen. And then eventually nga, because of evolution, yun na. Next, number two. Why do you think the emergence of plants and animals came later than simple living organisms? So, bakat na unay mga simpler forms? 
ba? Diba? So, the choices are flash on your screen. So, habang naka-flash yan, konting shout-out lang tayo sa ating mga viewers. Si Ms. Amorfina del Rosario from Valenzuela, Karuhatan, si, uh, Karuhatan Valenzuela City. Good afternoon po. We also have Nathaniel, Nathaniel Sagal Mandap watching from Comillas High School. Good afternoon, high school. Good afternoon sa'yo na. Danica Cordero, also from Comillas High School. Saan kaya yung Comillas High School? Formula naman ako, sabi yung Comillas High School na yan para ma-shout out natin. We also have viewers, Mariela Guillen. Yan, from Comillas din. Clayne Galano from Comillas High School. So I hope you are learning from our discussion. So what's the answer for number two? The best answer is letter A. The cell structures of these multicellular organisms are more complex. So from simpler to complex. Number three, which of the following is not true about the evidence that fossils provide? Yan, senior high school learners. Dapat sa kapag multiple choices ang questions, lagi kong sinasabi, hindi yung pinakamahaba ang tamang sagot. Okay, tama. Uh, tapos na yung mga times na gano'n na dati, di ba, ang tinuturo kung ano yung mahaba. No, we have to analyze each of the uh, choices. So, which one is not true? So, from among the choices, ayan. Actually, it's letter A. Ayan. So, bakit letter A, sir? Kasi ang sabi dyan, all fossils gathered contain intact DNA that can be sequenced. Okay? Kasi may mga... Fossils tayo na may matatagpo ang fos, uh, DNA, uh, pro, uh, DNA material. So, pwede yung gamitin ng mga experts natin or scientists para malaman kung saan or ano yung mga ancestors nila. Alright? But not all fossils, kasi nga, depende sa, sa location niya or sa depende sa environmental condition kung ba, paano at saan na form yung fossils. So, hindi lahat ng fossils may DNA na nilalaman. So, that is the best answer. Letter A. And then finally, number four, the study of history of life is indeed significant. So very important. As part of searching for the fossils of previous organisms, so hanggang ngayon, actually, hindi pa naman uh, nag-stop ang ating search for fossils. If you watch the the famous magazine show last night, di ba, may fossil ng stegodon na natagpuan, kamag-anak ng mga mammoths or ng mga uh, ancestors ng elephants, di ba? So, the, the quest for, or the quest for fossils is continuous, kumbaga. Because, kumbaga, uh, uh, it helps in providing uh, relevant information pa. So, the question, num this question, question number four, is about stromatolites. So, which is true about stromatolites? Found on eukaryotes, produced by endosymbiosis, consists of layered bacteria and sediment, or it is formed during volcanic eruptions. So the stromatolites, very important sila because they house the cyanobacteria, all right? The colonies of cyanobacteria. So the best answer is letter C. It consists of layered bacteria and the sediments. Kasi nga, sedimentary rock siya, all right? So our session will not be complete without our hashtag be inspired and hashtag be blessed segment. So because we discuss diversity di ba, sa ating session today. So uh, we have here the quote from, um, um, uh, from Henry Ford, an American industrialist. Sabi niya, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. And working together is success. So kahit diversify tayo mga Filipinos, may mga ethnicities tayo, di ba? Or diversify tayo sa mga tao sa buong mundo. We have to come together, especially sa mga trying times like this. Alright? So that's our hashtag, be inspired, and hashtag, be blessed. And that's all for this session. That's our quarter two, quarter four, week one for senior high school earth and life science. So you can reach me sa aking email, sirtonimaypaji at gmail.com, sa aking Facebook at sa aking YouTube. Thank you very much for joining me on this 40-minute session. I hope you are all safe and I hope you were, uh, I was able to uh, impart knowledge and inspire you this afternoon. Ayan, so, toto ko lang kasi next at mga senior high school sessions would be Twitter Cat for senior high school media and info. Keep safe. Bye bye. God bless.
Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!